I just watched You Won't Be Alone. It's a fascinating movie. It's also a very good movie. And I'll tell you why. Before I continue, please hit the like button so the algorithm recognizes my channel. This is Jan. Welcome to my channel. This is a review of the movie You Won't Be Alone with Nomi Rapage and others. This is actually a little caveat right here because yeah, she is not the main character, at least for most of the time. Let's put it this way. Um, she plays a significant role, but it's not her main character going through a story. There's a twist to it. <laughs> so what's this movie about? This movie takes place in an undetermined past. Could be the 1700s in Macedonia. 1600s, you don't really know. It's very steeped in the tradition of this country. It's very isolated in nature, small villages, uh, people living the simple life, not using any technology that's more than a knife. And uh, it's a fascinating world. It's an ancient world and it's something that we still can relate to, but we know it's over. So when you think about fairy tales, and especially witch stories, you can very, very well understand that those kind of stories came from those kind of environments. You know, little villages with their people living with their animals, very limited resources. They have to catch the water from the well. They have to cut down the grass by hand. They have a small knit community. They have fear of the outside world, fear of demons. The interesting thing, so and here it starts, because we're not following a character or several characters in these ancient villages. We are actually following the main character who becomes a witch and she is always an outsider. So she's never a part of them. Before she even becomes a witch, she is an outsider. To give you a little context, so we are in this time, in this ancient time, there is a witch which haunts those villages and she takes their kids. One of the mothers who just birthed a child is being visited by this witch, a terrifying figure. She's totally burned up and this will be revealed later why, but she's totally burned up by the life. And she comes to her with the intention to take her child. <laughs> but then what this mother does, she hides the child in a sacred cave. So the which can get to her. But in the end, the witch gets to her, turns her into a witch herself and makes her her apprentice. And yeah, I'm giving something away here, but on the other hand, without that, there wouldn't be a story. So I don't think that's a big reveal here. What happens then, is that this witch is never really happy being a witch. She has this very strong desire to be part of the human world. That comes from her life in the cage when she was always able to hear the outside or witness her mother coming in, feeding her for just brief moments of time. So she has this, has this desire to go back to the human world, although now she is a witch, with everything that comes with it. So there's a complete lack of understanding how humans work, interact. So the whole story is very much about an extreme outsider. She has the ability 
to take over human shapes, hu human bodies. That's what she does. That's how she tries to experience the human experience. And this is where we get to the core of the movie. So, you know, the story continues and there's an ending and I don't want to get more into it, to be honest with you. You just have to experience it yourself. But here we are at the core of the movie. The core of the movie is this one individual that is not connected, that is not dialed into how humans behave, trying to become human, trying to understand what humanity means. And it's actually a scary thing to watch because she's just copying human behavior, but she's not really becoming human. In the end, it's, I don't know if she really becomes human or not. That's up to you to decide. That's the scary thing. She's trying to copy the human behavior. She tries to look at humans, how they smile, how they, you know, how they cry, tries to emulate human behavior. And that reminds me of psychopaths. Yeah, that's what they do. They try to appear human, although they're not. And this witch kind of wants to do it, but she has this very human, this, the positive thing about her Compared to a psychopath, the positive thing about her is that she has this very positive striving to want to be human. So the, in comparison to a psychopath, on the other hand, this witch has this strong urge to understand humans, to become human. So we do not hate her. So this is also one of the interesting things of the movie. When you watch a movie like this and the main character is not like you, there's always a problem to identify. At some point, you, as a viewer, you disconnect. Um, but it's, you know, what keeps you in the movie is the interesting environment, the philosophical questions, and the beautiful, beautiful images. This beautiful world. Nature plays a huge part in this movie. There are breathtaking shots of mountains, clouds. It's how we most likely have in our ancient part of the brain. That's how we still have our ancestors' life stored in there. That's how we can identify with this. At least, you know, from my heritage, I can see uh, my ancestors living in very similar environment and believing very similar things. So that is a huge, huge achievement of this movie that it recreated this ancient world so real. Let me now tell you what I like about this movie. One thing, which is probably not the main thing, but the one thing I really love is the world it creates. This world of an ancient, simple society in nature. And then all the inhabitants of this, of this world, uh, the women, the men, the way they, how they interact with each other, the simplicity the, and the cruelness that exists in this world. It's uh, like you, they, you were there and they just, you know, somebody just sent them people with cameras filming these people, how they interact with each other. So that's number one. And I think number two is, that's the best part. So number two, I think the big achievement here, it is how the story is told from the perspective of a witch. And there is no judgment. There are no cliches around it. There is no self-awareness. It's very, yeah, this is the way it is. This is how it would be if you are a witch. And that's how it was. There's no question about it. And that makes it so intriguing. You really, you really think like, wow, this is, yeah, this is how it would be. And you are with this one person who becomes a witch, who then has to go through the trials of being a witch, being in nature, being with this mother witch, uh, then also, you know, trying to be human. There's no playing around. It's just there. So it's that's I love that. I love that a lot. 
And the other reason why I like this movie so much, there's so much to ponder uh, on human existence. <clears throat> there's so much to think about, oh, what does it mean to be an outsider? Who is an outsider? What does society mean in this microcosmos? And you really ask yourself, what does it mean to be a witch? Are witches real? The movie makes you understand why people were believing in witches in this way. Now people still believe in witches, but in a, I think in a different way. Let's talk about acting. Of course, the acting. I love actors so much. And, you know, they were in good hands here, obviously. Everybody was just brilliant. I couldn't complain, honestly, about anyone. And everybody's terrific. So yeah, let me talk about the camera work. Camera work is very immediate. It's very close to the characters. It's really like from the point of view of the character. So this movie starts from the point of view of a cat, right? And that's kind of introduces the language, the visual language of the um, of the movie. So it's, it's either the, the point of view or it's so close to the characters. And it's the, you know, you experience this world through the character and the camera really so supports this kind of vision. There's sometimes it steps out a little, but it's it's just very close. So I do like it a lot. I don't understand why it's this square format. I wonder why people do that. Because I mean, for me, it's at least 16 by nine should be the minimum. That's because we have two eyes next to each other, right? And I want my field of vision to be filled out. I want to be in this world, right? So, you know, I need a 16 by 9 frame. Doesn't have to be a cinema scope, but you know, 16 by 9 is, I, I like it better. Just personal view here. So if you made it this far, please press the like button and uh, also subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Okay, now we come to the bonus section. What if this movie would be a collective dream of humanity? That's the question I always ask myself because I do believe that movies are nothing but dreams of humanity. So this movie happens. So we dreamt this film, we dreamt this movie. This movie is a dream. So what does it mean? What I think this movie is about is about alienation. It's uh, the, from the dreamt, from the view of an individual that's completely alienated. This is happening a lot. A lot of people are completely alienated. So yeah, this is now the second movie I saw this year, which is about alienation. First, uh, I saw, you know, Bones and all. I think it's interesting. I don't know if this is a trend, but definitely um, this is the dream and uh, the struggle for belonging. Uh, and and uh, if, you, if you can't achieve that belonging, you become a danger to society. Yeah. It's, uh, it's an uneasy topic. So that's why I like the movie. Again, you, it makes you think a lot. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.